In the basic aspects of uh, treating dry eye syndrome, there is um, the use of artificial tears, which mainly contain um, polyvinyl alcohol, metal cellulose, um, hyaluronic acid, and uh, many other additives. All artificial tears differ fundamentally um, in terms of which layer of the tear film they affect, that is what they are targeted at. If we have a dysfunction of the lipid layer of the tear film, accordingly um, we, we choose a medication that replaces this lipid layer. Um, all of our artificial tears, when they come into contact with a person's own tears, form a kind of protective film on the surface of the cornea which prevents the watery part of the tear film from evaporating so quickly. Uh, it should be noted that no matter which artificial tears we choose, they still need to be instilled five or six times a day, or even more often if we are actively working at the computer, forgetting to blink, or if we know we are going to a windy or dusty environment. In such cases, it is simply essential to create this additional tear film on the surface of our cornea, so to speak. Uh, there are low and medium uh, viscosity preparations, for example, uh, Optinol, uh, Ilakei, Ilakomot. Their main difference, of course, lies in their composition. If we need to, let's say, heal the cornea, then we choose preparations that contain the expantanol in their composition. That is, if we have a pronounced dry eye syndrome and even elements of corneal erosion, then this is what we need. If, for example, we need the artificial tear to have an antiseptic effect, meaning we often have symptoms similar to conjunctivitis, then it is better to choose preparations that contain an antiseptic. If the patient has allergies, it is essential for them to choose preservative-free preparations. Um, that is, ideally, even single-dose forms are preferable. For example, there are single dose systems, meaning a preparation that you open, it's like a, a small ampoule. You open it in the morning, use the drops throughout the day, you can keep it in your bag, and at the end of the day you throw away the bottle. So for 12 or 12 to 24 hours it remains sterile, because there are no preservatives inside. If a patient does not have a pronounced um, dry eye syndrome and only occasionally needs something, for example, when driving for a long time, then it is possible to use preparations with preservatives as well. It's also important to understand that these preparations can vary quite a lot in terms of price. The more specialized and preservative-free the preparation is, the more expensive it will be. So you shouldn't assume that by buying a cheap preparation you'll solve your dry eye syndrome problem. If you have allergic issues and you buy a preparation with a lot of preservatives, you'll get the opposite effect. Uh, in other words, your, um, your dry eye syndrome may actually get worse. In some cases, patients need more viscous preparations. For example, Corneregel, VDC, Autogel. These are gel-based preparations that form a much stronger, more intensive film on the surface of the eye. You don't even instill these drops, but rather place the preparation under the lower eyelid and give it time to spread across the surface of the eye. So you need to be prepared for, uh, for the fact that uh, for the first couple of minutes you will experience some blurriness of vision. After that it will clear up and the patient will feel quite comfortable. I would still recommend that patients consult an ophthalmologist when choosing these products at least to determine what exactly is causing your dry eye syndrome because there are many medications and uh, they are not suitable for everyone, plus trying a lot of different ones at once can be quite expensive. That's why it's easier to identify the cause and choose the medication that is right for you. Mm -hmm.